Hi everybody, welcome to Cooking at Home with Create Hospitality. Here we have another episode where we're gonna be doing polenta and spicy mushrooms. Super excited for this episode, but before we get started, those, those of you just joining us at home, grab a glass of wine or pour yourself a glass of juice, whatever you prefer, and uh, let's do this to say our little toast for the evening. All right, so cheers and uh, Thank you for joining me tonight. All right. So before we get started, I'm gonna take you through all the ingredients to make sure you have everything you need if you are cooking at home with me live. So um, we first wanna start with our mushrooms. We have two types of mushrooms here. We have shiitake mushrooms and white mushrooms. We have fresh garlic here. We have butter, Parmesan cheese, balsamic vinegar, um, a little bit of Calabrian chili paste, salt, pepper, lemon, and we have a little bit of thyme here, uh, fresh parsley, and then we have our corn grits, cornmeal or polenta, and we have a little bit of almond milk, which is unsweetened or any kind of non-dairy beverage. You can use regular whole milk as well. So let's get started here. If you're gonna be pulling out your equipment, the first thing you wanna start with is a medium-sized saucepan, and we're going to be adding uh, the water and the almond beverage or non-dairy beverage to, to this. So we have two cups of water here, and I'm gonna be adding another two cups of water to this. This is gonna ensure that it's gonna be really creamy and smooth. All right, so we have two cups of, of non-dairy milk and two cups of water. This is gonna go into the saucepan. and we're gonna bring this to a boil. So turn this on, on high heat. All right, perfect. Okay, so while that's boiling, let's get the mushrooms started. So we have two types of mushrooms in here, like I said before, and what's important about mushrooms is how you clean them. So don't wash mushrooms because they soak up all that water and it makes them kind of mushy. So when you get mushrooms home from the market, the best thing to do is take a paper towel and just kind of slowly brush off the dust or dirt. It's all natural, all the dirt's good for you. Nice and hearty. So let's do both of these. Just kind of brushing the dirt off. Okay, perfect. And then we're just gonna cut them into slices. So using your chef's knife, holding it steady and just coming down and making some nice thin slices here, okay? Perfect. Okay, so let's get the garlic started as well. So we have five cloves of garlic here. We're gonna use our garlic chopper. I did check that you can get this garlic chopper on Amazon. So go ahead and get that if you guys haven't seen me use this a million times in my episodes so far. Sonia asked if you can use um, uh, coconut milk. You can use coconut milk, just make sure it's unsweetened and unflavored so that it's super plain and kind of acting as a regular dairy milk would. Okay, so we got our garlic chopper here and we're gonna get that going. The reason I'm getting our garlic and mushrooms together at the same time is because I don't want to let the garlic sit too long in the pan. We, we don't want it to burn. So we're gonna, we want to make sure that everything, all the ingredients are prepped and ready before we get started with the heat. Okay, great. Perfect. So we're gonna get our medium to large uh, pan here. We're gonna turn this to medium high heat and we're gonna get started here with a little bit of olive oil and butter. So about two tablespoons here of olive oil and a little bit of butter. And the reason I'm using both is because they have different heat temperatures and it'll also give flavor. The reason that I am using real butter is because I prefer the flavor, but a another good butter substitute is Earth Balance. It has excellent flavor and if you wanna use this as a vegan alternative, you're more than welcome to. I just am trying, I'm just gonna do it classic way today. Um, also, mushrooms need a lot of moisture to them, so that's why I'm adding both olive oil and butter to this dish. So we're letting this kind of melt down here and get started. Give it another minute or two while this is boiling. 
see if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Just reading your comments, I love it. You guys are cracking me up at home. Okay, great. So this is kind of come down a little bit and let's add the garlic to get started. And again, always wanna watch your garlic very carefully. You, you want it to start caramelizing, but not burn, because that garlic burnt flavor it take, tastes terrible. All right, let's just give that a minute here. Bowie's head is poking through. Bowie? Oh. <laughs> Can you guys see Bowie when I back up? <laughs> Bowie the Wonder Dog that's perfect on every episode and that's his favorite corner to sit in. Someone asked a question, how about alvarado? Oh, I mean, oh, avocado butter? I'm like, sure, I don't, I don't think I've ever cooked with that actually, but I would love to explore that. It's kind of an interesting option. Okay, see how here the garlic is starting to, to come up a little bit and give it a few more minutes before we add the mushrooms. It's really gonna get the garlic flavor into the butter and oil and kind of set the tone for the rest of the dish. Smells amazing. Okay, mushrooms are going in. And mushrooms tend to cook down a lot. So go ahead and add a little bit more than you think because like I said, it's, it's all gonna get cooked down. So let's make sure that the mushrooms are really tossed nicely and evenly coated with the butter and the olive oil and the garlic. All right, someone has a question here. What does garlic come up mean? watch the garlic come up. I guess like start to start to bring the flavor and, and the caramelization into it. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm making up my own words right now. But it start it starts to get more more translucent. It's when the garlic has started to, to cook in the pan. Does that make sense? I kind of like come up better. I don't know about you. Okay, so let's look, let's get this let this set for a second. So let's check out our water and milk mixture here. It's almost about to boil. We're getting close. So while that's while that's getting there, we're going to do our polenta. So we had two cups of water, two cups of milk, and two one cup of polenta. And it expands a lot. So I would say this is good for a dinner for two. Dinner for four, you can double the recipe. I'm using a quick grits. Um, uh, so it cooks in five minutes, but if you want to use um, another type of polenta, sometimes it takes longer. So make sure that you read, read the back of the package. All right, you guys, move this down a little bit. So the water and milk has come to a boil. And so I'm going to slowly add in the polenta here. What's important about this is you're constantly whisking. You want to make sure that you're incorporating and it doesn't get dry. So every few minutes, kind of check on this and, and give it a nice whisk. So we're going to bring this down to about medium, medium heat. Make sure that it's the water's still hot enough that it's boiling. Giving it a stir. So let's check. So Paige, you come check, check on this. See if I have the, the water boiling with the polenta in it. Now you can turn it down to low heat. So we want to make sure the, the water came up with the polenta and that it's boiling and then you're going to bring it down to low heat. And you're going to keep your eye on this and make sure that it's uh, that you're constantly giving it a good mix and it's not it's not over boiling. The mushrooms are looking pretty good here. They're starting to, to caramelize and cook down. So you see, we started with a pretty big pan of mushrooms and it's starting to, to cook down. All right. So now it's in a place where I'm going to add the other liquids to this. So we're gonna add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Just about 
a little less than a tablespoon. We're gonna add a little bit of Calabrian chili paste. This is really spicy, so a little goes a long way. So just the, the end of my teaspoon here. Go ahead and put that in. We're also gonna add in our herbs. So this is thyme. I got it from my neighbor's garden. She brought it over for me. Actually, it's weird. I see it growing everywhere all over the neighborhood. It's like in random little places. So go ahead and take a look out for that or get it at the store. You just need to come down the stem and pull it off. Super easy. I love thyme. It's actually a little bit lemony. So this is great to use in, in Italian and French, French, in French uh, cooking. Uh, great for mushrooms. Kind of off offsets that umami flavor. Okay, great. So that's the thyme. We're gonna add a little bit of lemon here. So I'm just going to cut into this lemon. I want to squeeze the lemon right into the pan. Sonia asks, "Is it French thyme?" <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's Venice Beach time. It was grown here. <laughs> okay, let's get this incorporated completely. And now we're trying to do, now there's more liquid in the pan. Now we want to make, make this liquid get more concentrated. So we're going to cook this down until the liquid gets m more concentrated and cooks down into the mushrooms. So we'll let that go. I'm going to turn this heat up a little bit. By turning the heat up a little bit, it's going to caramelize the liquid quick, quicker. And see now it, it's boiling a little bit. So we want to get a little caramelization on this. All right. And the last thing, of course, is salt and pepper. And we'll add parsley in right before it's done. So salt, some pepper here. Now we can check on the polenta. So let's give this a good stir. Make sure that it's incorporating nicely. Looking nice and creamy here. So we're gonna finish this off with uh, butter or earth balance. Parmesan cheese, which you can omit if you're gonna do this vegan and a little more salt and pepper. But if you see here, it's really, it's already almost cooked. Take a look at that page. See, we're, we're actually almost there, really fast. So, just give it another minute or two. And uh, this is looking great as well. While we're talking about Parmesan cheese, I don't know if last week I was saying I couldn't find Parmesan cheese anywhere at the store. It was really, really hard to find. And, you know, because I have a little time on my hands, I was cleaning out the freezer and uh, I, I found some Parmesan cheese, you guys. Um, <laughs> I, I had this from, from an event and I decided to freeze it and during this panic, I totally forgot that I had enough Parmesan cheese for all of you. So if you guys want to call me, I can either Postmate it to you, send you delivery, Grubhub, Parmesan cheese. So I thought that was really ridiculous. All right, the mushrooms are looking really good right now. The last thing, we're going to add some fresh parsley to this. So I'm pulling off some fresh parsley. And I'm going to just on this. So cutting it finely. So I'm, I'm stacking the leaves all together in a really tight bunch and then slowly rolling my knife through this. It's the best way to do this efficiently so you don't have to come and ch chop it a second time. So it's gathering the bunch in, in a really tight stack and then chopping through that. Okay. So we're going to gather this up. Add this will take a little bit for the end. Stir this. We're almost done here, actually. We're kind of getting very close. Okay. 
really beautiful flavor on these and color on these mushrooms. It smells delicious. And you know what, actually to keep things up a little bit more, because this is what we do, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of wine to this. For those who don't drink, uh, don't go ahead, don't add this, but. One last touch, it's gonna, all the alcohol is gonna cook out of this and just add a little more flavor to the dish. So a little bit of white wine. It's also gonna deglaze the pan. So now all those yummy bits in the bottom of the pan are gonna come and, and be a part of the mushroom flavor of this dish. It smells amazing. All right, we're just about ready to go here. Okay, so I, I might actually take the polenta off of the heat now. It's completely cooked. And I, you know, stirred it just a few times. That's very easy. So now we're gonna add our, our creaminess to it. So we're gonna add a little bit more butter here. Or vegan butter if you like. And let's get that stirred in here. We got a question. The alcohol, the alcohol burns off, so even if you don't drink it, it would be fine, right? Yeah, all, all the alcohol evaporates with the heat. So go ahead and if you're, if you're cooking with wine, you, you're not going to feel any effects from, from cooking with wine. All right, the butter's incorporated, getting nice and creamy, and now we're going to add the Parmesan. A generous amount. Now that I have tons in the freezer, or I'll share with you guys if you want. Okay, give this a nice whisk. And now I'm gonna finish it with salt. Okay, and a little bit of pepper. I think we're about ready to plate. The mushrooms are, are ready now. Can you can you get a little see this? See how the the color on the, these mushrooms has really really uh, expressed itself. Beautiful. That's that's what we're looking for. That color. So it it takes time, but it's not burning. It's really the everything we put they put in here um, coming coming together to create that color. All right. So let's let's turn this off. Okay, so I'm gonna get a nice bowl here. Turn off the station a little bit. All right. Okay, so we're gonna take our polenta. Three heaping tablespoons would be nice. And then we're gonna go into our mushrooms here. Okay. It's, uh, when you're plating something, it's always about creating a focal point for, for the dish. So you always wanna be plating something central and keep stacking on top of there. And then let's do our garnish. So, a little bit more fresh parsley here. Fresh herbs are always the best. And we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Okay, everybody. So this is your polenta with uh, spicy mushrooms. Do you guys have any questions before we wrap it up and I can eat dinner? Yeah, Maylin asked, does the polenta harden or can you choose creamer like yours based on ingredients? Does the polenta harden is what you just yeah. said. So the, the polenta will start to get, uh, will start to harden if I don't continue to stir it and we take we take it off the heat. So, but you can always, um, if you want to, like I said, make it again the next day, you can add a little bit of water or vegetable stock to kind of make it soft again. Or you can do what I did. So actually, I had leftover polenta from when I was making this earlier today, and I just used a spatula and I put it into a small baking sheet. Can you guys see this? So it's actually like, kind of like 
flimsy but also has like a solid texture to it i put a piece of wax paper down and just slowly with a spatula kind of put it onto this baking sheet here then i use a glass and i cut out like a small circle like this let me put this down cut out a small circle like this and now i have like a little polenta cake so this is like super solid. So you can pan sear this or you can put it in the air fryer. You can always, if you want to use like a bigger size like that, you can put some eggplant tapenade on it or any, any kind of tomato sauce or any way you want to use this. Um, and basically you'll have like little, little fried pieces of polenta cake. So this can be used for a topping or like I said, it'll be really good with sauce. Um, so don't waste it. You can make polenta fries basically. You could put a little bit of garlic aioli on the side and kind of and dip these in and eat them. Um, but there's so many ways to use polenta so it's not left over. So anything else? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight at Cooking at Home with Great Hospitality, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks so much. Bye.